Hi and hello everyone. Recall that uh, what we have been seeing in the previous lecture was this priority queuing system. Uh, basically, we have considered the non preemptive priority systems with two classes, right? Uh, much like a MM1, now with that uh, there are two uh, arrival rates one for higher priority, one for lower priority, or priority 1 and priority 2. And we assume that uh, the first model that we considered is was equal service rate case, which assumed that for both the priority classes, uh, the service rate was mu. We call this as two priority single rate model and we wrote the balance equation and uh, very difficult to get a complete solution for the steady state system size probability. So, what we are defined is we defined this partial generating functions and then we defined constructed the full generating function or the joint generating function and by differentiating that we obtained the mean performance measures which are number in the system, waiting time in the system, waiting time in the queue, number in the queue for priority class 1, 2 and these are the quantities that uh, one can obtain. And so, we just finally said that this boxed thing is what we are keeping it boxed because we want to make some comparison with the using this thing. So, that is why you know we kept it in this form. Uh, that is the performance measures that uh, uh, what we could achieve in that and then we made some observations uh, with regard to uh, the behavior of these performance measures. Of course, much more can be had if you analyze more deeply, but these are some specific observations specific to the priority system. Right? Now, let us consider the model B which we now relax the single rate for this service of both the priorities to two rates. Essentially, everything remain the same. So, the service rates of the two classes are not necessarily equal in general and that is where you know is going to be useful. So, mu 1 suppose if it is the service rate for priority customer 1 and mu 2 for the lower priority customers. As usual you define rho 1 by lambda 1 by mu 1, rho 2 by lambda 2 by mu 2 and rho as rho 1 plus rho 2. Now, a similar analysis exactly we can write a similar balance equation now, but rates have to be appropriated in whether it is mu 1 or mu 2 depending upon whether the service completion happening uh, is essentially what we call a priority 1 customer or priority 2 customer accordingly that only the change would be mu would be replaced by either mu 1 or mu 2 depending upon the scenario. Then you have all similar analysis one can do, you can define the partial generating function, you can analyze everything and one gets finally the number in the system, number in the queue for the priority class customer 1 as this. Okay. Lambda 1 times rho 1 by mu 1 plus rho 2 by mu 2 divided by 1 minus rho 1. If I go back, this is what we had it lambda 1, right, rho divided by mu minus lambda 1, the, that remains here. So, this is there. So, this is essentially because of these two rates. It, now, if you substitute mu 1 equal to mu 2, you should get back the other expressions which you can check, right. So, this is the mean number in the queue of priority 1 customers who are there in the queue. This is mean number of priority 2 customers in the queue and LQ is just sum of these two, right. So, which is the overall number in the system, right. Obviously, the, there are only two types here. So, this average number plus this average number must equal the overall number. So, LQ would be here. Now, as in the previous case, here also this part is extra, it is for interested, you can look it up. So, this is the probabilities of priority 1 customers in equilibrium is what this expression is. But what we have in mind is this for do to you know to do some kind of analysis what we have is this boxed material again. But now this boxed material is with unequal rates or two service rate. Okay. Now, let us consider another model model C. Here we have two customer classes. Okay. 
with respective arrival rates lambda 1 and lambda 2 and with respective service rates mu 1 and mu 2 service times are exponential and now customers are served on an FCFS basis okay meaning there is no priority here now here right there is no priority here that we are imposing in this situation right so as and so the it is merely that there are two class of customers who are being merged into a single queue, but when it they are taken up for service, they are served at different rates mu 1 and mu 2. But the picking of customers for service is on the basis of FCFS, so there is no priority. Okay. So, this is a simple two class model. Remember that whenever you say multiple class, it does not always mean priority customers. Okay. Multiple class could still follow an FCFS business as given here. Now, this two class model can be viewed in some sense as a single class M H21 Q, right? Because the arrivals are independent with rate lambda 1 and lambda 2. Suppose if you merge them together then you could consider that a, as if it is an arrival from a in a single stream with rate lambda. Customers are grouped into single arrival stream and the service distribution is a mixture of two exponential distributions. Right? You could with you that each customer is being picked one of this distribution depending upon the class, but here you know once you group them but in this as such you know you do not have a distinction between the arrival units, but in this there is. So, there is some difference, but this can be viewed in this manner as a mixture of two exponential distribution is what the service time and a single class arrival. Okay. Now, for this model we are now using this because M H 2 1 we have not dealt with in any way. But you know this could be dealt with after having seen the MG1 model, which we will do later. If we have the knowledge of MG1, then this is very easy to see how we are obtaining this uh, performance measures, this average performance measures. But right now you take this as uh, as if it's something as granted. Okay, but you know you can obtain even otherwise with the current material. But that's a little tedious process. But if you have knowledge about the analysis of MG1 model then this is very easy to obtain uh, these quantities very very easily one can obtain. So, you can see that later, but if you want to analyze again you can go back and then you can start from the basic and you can get the analysis, but that is very tedious job anyway. Now, what we are getting here is this as the number of priority 1 customers, mean number of priority 2 customers both of them in the queue and this is the total number right. So, you can look at here what is happening here right and what you can look at what is happening here in this particular case. Okay. Now, one can show that it the, the LQ here in the two class FCFS is always greater than the standard MM1 model obvious because uh, now the service distribution at least because arrival could you can consider as a single stream no no issue in that but array service is basically it's not exponential it is a mixture of exponential and hence it has higher variability then obviously your lq has to be higher right so this is the two class model so we have considered now a b c two uh, three models one rate two two priorities one rate which is model a two priorities two rates which model b now this is two class no priority two class model uh, this is two class fcfs now let us make uh, some kind of comparisons and some analysis we can do with respect to this model first let us consider the last two models b and c which is priority queues with unequal service rates which is mu 1 mu 2 two rate okay. and with the non priority one which is simply the two class fcfs model now, as one can show, right, you have the expressions here. You now, why we kept this box material is to show that you have the expression here and you have the expression here. Using these two expressions, right, one can show that the imposition of priorities, what is the impact? The impact is it decreases the mean number of priority 1 customers and increases the mean number of priority to customers. Well, this is nothing uh, unusual. This is also quite you would expect. 
right? Because in the other one case, like you are treating all of them are equal. In, in the other case, you know, you are giving some priority. Though it is non-preemptive model, but at least, you know, if there is anything, any lawyer priority customers are there, he jumps the queue, right? Some customers at least he will jump. So, he gets service ahead. So, the number of priority one customers should obviously decrease and mean number of priority customers will also be increase, right? For the lawyer priority customers. This is obvious, but then why the quantification? The quantification is always essential, right? To sure for proving that, okay, now you have the expression, you can show it with expression, this is true. The additional benefit is that if you want to measure, you know, how much it is increasing or how much it is decreasing, then you need the quantification. Just that intuitive idea is not sufficient. Uh, this happens with any mathematical model for, for that matter. So, it also happens here also. So, you could think about in that way. So, this is about priority 1 and priority 2. Now, how does this overall system performance compares between these two? right for which then we can pick say LQ again you can do analysis with WQL or anything because they are all equivalent you know that if you know one you know you can get the remaining three as well right so we can do with one so let us pick LQ between these two models okay now you see here this LQ of B is given by this and LQ of C is given by this so these two then they differ by a fact this right obvious because this is common when you divide this by this right what you will get is that this divided by this is what you will get and that is what is the factor here okay now this is the overall number lq that we have now we have kept this for comparison purpose here now you can see since these two differ by a factor by this quantity now, this factor will be less than 1 and what would that mean? That means, this is the priority one, right? So, the overall also there will be fewer number of priority customers. Overall also there will be fewer number of system in the priority queue, not priority customers only, but it is in the queue, overall queue also. Because what will happen to the higher priority customer, lower priority customer in the priority model vis-a-vis -vis the non-priority model is intuitive you can still measure the how much is the question that is additional thing. But what will happen to overall it is not intuitive, it is not intuitive right. So, basically then you have to look at here then what is the idea that you can get from here right. So, this is LQ of B which is priority model, LQ of C which is the two class model with no priority okay, both of them have two rates basically. Now, if this factor is less than 1 that means then the overall number, the overall number in the Q in the priority model will be less than the non-priority one. So, what does that translates to? So, this quantity is less than 1, that is equivalent to saying lambda 1 rho is greater than lambda rho 1, which is equivalent to saying just expansion of this. Now, just equivalent to saying that if I you know cancel it out equivalent to saying this. So, when does this happen? Mu 2 less than mu 1. That is the idea, finding that you are making in this particular case, right? Which means when, so the fewer, there will be fewer customers in the whole system when there is priority provided this is satisfied, which means that the priority customers have a higher service rate right that is what this means right. So, this particular thing gives rise to an optimal design rule which is what is called as the shortest processing time rule and this is the basis for this rule right. So, what we are seeing here from this comparison just this comparison of LQ between these two models that this will be smaller than this quantity if mu 2 less than mu 1, that is what you are saying. So, that is the priority Q results in less overall weighting as compared to the corresponding FCFS, right. When the first priority customers have faster service rate or equivalently shorter service time. 
shorter service time. Okay. Conversely, the priority queue results in more overall waiting when the priority customers have longer service rates. Okay. So, if you want, what is your objective then when you are designing a queuing system, you will have a certain objective in mind. If your objective is the overall reduction of the total number of customers who are waiting or equivalently the overall mean delay, whatever in equivalent words you can, can use, then what you should do? You should give priority to the group of class of customers that has a faster service rate. So, how you will achieve? So, that is what is this rule, shortest processing time rule. So, the shortest processing time means that the faster service rate, right? So, basis for this is basically you can establish by you know this analysis that you have done so far, right? Some things may be intuitive, some things may not be intuitive that much, but still you know you can do it via analysis. That is typical and here also that holds here. Things may be intuitive or intuitive does not matter, but you know you can show it in this way, right? You see precisely when that can happen in this case, right? So, this is what is you can if you compare the two rate priority with the two rate no priority model, right? Now, let us compare the priority 2 rate with priority 1 rate model, right. Now, you want this 1 rate. Now, what you will pick this 1 rate, okay. You must make some choice of certain mu. So, there is a mu 1, there is mu 2 in the 1 model and there is a mu there. So, now you have to compare. So, mu has you have to pick something. What you will pick? One obvious choice is take the average of these two means, right. So, this is one reasonable assumption that the mean service rate mu you pick uh, as satisfying this average rate. Okay. Or in general, you can pick mu to lie anywhere between mu 1 and mu 2. Right. You may not make much justification if you go beyond this rate, but at least it will be it must be between these two. That is clear when you make this one rate comparison. Okay. Now, one can show, right. So, it can be shown, but of course, these are all some of the exercise problems in your book, but otherwise also one can show if this mu, if you pick not this average, but maximum of these two, okay, maximum of these two. So, the maximum rate you pick for mu, then what happens? Then the measures of the one rate model are less than the measures of the two rate model, right? And if you pick mu to be minimum of these two, then the reverse happens. Okay. Now, if you ask the question, what would happen to such such quantities one by mu? Obviously, this lies between mu one and mu two, and whether in this particular case, which model will perform better or worse, you know, has to be and it is dependent on the parameter values lambda 1, lambda 2, mu 1, mu 2. It depends on all the parameters that if mu is strictly between these two, then the comparison would depend on the parameter. Of course, on the one extreme, you know, say if it is maximum, then the one rate model is better. If it is minimum, then the two rate model is better. Okay. But what if in between? Obviously, somewhere it has to make a transition from one model to the other model to show that this is better, but that depends on really on the parameter values. So, this uh, uh, you can do some such things and uh, uh, this is a summary of uh, this kind of comparisons where we have also added an MM1 model with rate lambda as lambda 1 plus lambda 2 and by mu as the average of these two, weighted average of these two rates mu 1 and mu 2. And A which we call it A dash now. So, A, B, C is as usual. So, in this particular case like A and A dash will have the same LQ, B and A dash if we compare you know we set and B and A you know we set what will happen C and A dash and C and B what will happen and so on. So, this is the summary of uh, 
this kind of comparisons that uh, one can make with respect to these models. These are the, the priority models that we have, right. So, priority models, uh, priority systems analysis wise is difficult, but one can obtain certain mean performance measures and uh, from that mean performance measures, you can you know for managerial aspects, for managerial purposes, uh, you can draw certain conclusions and that is otherwise you know what is the use of studying such uh, models, right. So, you can draw certain conclusions and the, by making comparison of these measures and uh, different scenarios and so on to draw some insights. See this performance analysis or analysis is basically it is up to the you know in some sense the analyst how much you know he puts his brain behind and then how much he goes deeper into understanding the system and how much he can unearth the uh, insights from the analysis is up to him, right. So, the more deeper and the more closer you look at it, you will get more insights, typical of any model, any mathematical model per se, okay. But depending upon what is your objective, like you know you will target such kind of analysis. So, in this case, suppose if you have it in mind something like you know you have a you know two classes there, but you know you do not know you are not aware. Suppose if I assign priority, then what will happen? Whether, whether I am going to reduce my overall number or not, okay. Now, you can see for example, if you go to a supermarket, right, uh, uh, you know customers with less than 5 items uh, are you know allowed in one particular queue, right and customers with their you know bag full of cart full of items like you know they will be there in the other ones. Here probably they are not allowed because it is specifically for this kind of people. Reason behind? They expected to take less service time, right? Shorter service time. So you see, in the designing, in the design rule that we talked about, in that SPT rule is essentially applied there, right? Because, but justification. Now, like you know, today you ask, like you know, what is justification for that? You have to do this analysis and show that yes, this is the justification, right? So, that is what pretty much uh, happening there. So, to do that, to justify that you need to you need to have this in your hand to say and that is precisely what you have it in your hand right now, right, fine, one can go on. Now, there could be some extensions that one can think with respect to non preemptive of course, there are many directions. So, we have dealt with only two classes, but more classes obviously one can handle theoretically in principle, principle remain the same. But we have seen even in case of two priority, obtaining the steady state probabilities is you know very, very difficult. Now, for more than two priority, it is almost impossible in a way, right. It is near impossible because of their multidimensional nature and uh, you should define multidimensional generating function and what not, like things become complex here. But if you are interested only in the average performance measures, you have a direct approach expected value procedure that can be used to obtain the mean value measures. But this is not in our scheme, so we are not going into that. But a similar thing we are going to do it for an MG1 model later. So, that time same things can be applied similar to these kind of models as well, okay. The principle will you know one has to think and then we have to adapt it to the situation, right. But of course, the textbook has you know this thing also in, in that, so one can have an idea. And further extension could be like for example, continuous priority classes. So, this is essentially in computer and communication system, this is important. These are based on the actual service times, right. Here uh, we know that the exactly how much is the service requirement we know. So, then that is what we say assume to be known. This is if you know the actual service time. Now, this leads to what is called shortest job first SJF rule, okay. Uh, one can analyze using similar thing and then the multi server model also, you uh, know, one can think with respect to that. Again, you know, direct expected value procedure is what one might be interested to do in this particular cases, right. Some non preemptive systems and whatever we did over that, that gives the flavor of uh, how one can analyze the non a priority system which is non preemptive in nature and 
one can think about extensions on that okay. Now the, the other system right we said there are two kind of priorities one is non preemptive and preemptive. So, non preemptive we have seen. Now let us uh, you know brief about uh, what could be done for a system with preemptive priorities okay. Now in this case what we have ta we take the same model that we have considered it is a two priority model okay higher priority lower priority there are two there are two rates mu 1 mu 2 same Markovian assumptions everything is there meaning that arrival process is Poisson process service times are a exponential distribution and so on. The difference only now is that the there is no preemption now sorry there is preemption now <laughs> there is preemption now the no priority non preemptive only we have seen earlier but now with preemption is what now we are looking at here okay. So, what happens now suppose that a higher priority customer is undergoing a service a higher priority come customer comes he queues, a lower priority customer comes he also gets into the queue. Suppose a lower priority customer is being served currently in the service, then a lower priority customer comes okay he gets into the queue, but a higher priority customer comes what he will do is that he will interrupt the ongoing service of the lower priority customer and he will get into the service okay he will get into the, the fact that already a lower priority customer is in service means that there is no higher priority customers are waiting in the queue that is clear. So, whenever an arrival happens if it is higher priority then he will interrupt the service of the lower priority and he will get into the service and his service will start. Now right so lower priority units that are ejected from the service cannot re-enter the service until the system is free of all higher priority units okay. Now what will happen to the ejected units okay. they must start over losing all the partial work already completed this is preemptive non-resume or the ejected units resume service from the point of interruption this is preemptive resume regime right. So, you have preemptive resume and preempt non resume there are two uh, cases here, but here because the service times are exponential there is no distinction between these two whenever the service time is exponential you know that if you want to compute what is the remaining service time of uh, this customer it is still exponential with the same parameter. So, whenever it is interrupted from that point if you look at it what is going to be the, uh, the remaining service type that needs to be completed it is still exponential. So, whether you start all over or you start from there in the exponential case is one and the same. So, there is no difference, but this difference will come into play in case of service time distributions which are not exponential that much we have to remember. Now, the state space of this preemptive priority 2 class system is yes. Uh, so, there is a equality symbol missing here. So, the state space is now given by this m and n right m n greater than or equal to 0 with their steady state system size probability being defined by p m n where m is the number of units of priority 1 and n is number of units of priority 2 in the system in the steady state. As we said there are two rates for priority customer 1, priority customer 2 uh, there are two rates lambda 1 mu 1 and lambda 2 mu 2 arrival and service rates and lambda we define to be lambda 1 plus lambda 2 and rho which is this is rho 1 rho 2 in our earlier language. So, this lambda 1 by mu 1 plus lambda 2 by mu 2 which we need to assume to be less than 1 for the steady state to exist right. This is the usual assumption that we have here. Uh, now, as earlier one can proceed to write the balance equation uh, in will be there are in all there will be 2 to the power 2 which is 4 sets of equations if there are r priority classes then 2 to the power r uh, that many sets of equation corresponding to each of this class 0 0 m 0 0 n and m n okay. And uh, these are you know intuitively one can uh, write down. So, this is now it is two dimension you see in the non preemptive we had actually three dimension, but the third dimension is just two values 
but here it is even that is not there is two dimension slightly easier to handle in in that sense right so you can look at here uh, say for example if you look at the state mn when both of them are you know strictly greater than or equal to 1 right so obviously whenever m is greater than 1 or greater than or equal to 1 the system size is what we are looking at it uh, this the customer who is in service is actually the priority one customer that you have to keep in mind when you are writing it here. So, in suppose if the state is M n some generic state you assume somewhere well into the domain into the uh, state space not on the boundaries if you look at it then what could have happened M n there would have been one less priority customer and with lambda 1 uh, the state would have moved from m minus 1 n to m n one possibility. What are the other possibilities can happen? Rate uh, priority 1 customer arrives, priority 2 customer arrives, priority 1 customer service completion, priority 2 customer service completion. These are the 4 possibilities right. We have to look at those possibilities only. m minus 1 n an arrival of uh, priority 1 customer lab with rate lambda 1 takes the system from m minus 1 to m n one possibility. m n minus 1 an arrival of priority 2 customer takes the system from m n minus 1 to m n right or there could be an m plus 1 n in the system right. Now, since m is uh, strictly positive the priority one customer is in service and he will complete service with rate mu and taking this to state m n. Now, whenever this m and n are inside inside not on the boundary of the state space then obviously, the priority two customer cannot be in service this is a preemptive system right. So, priority two at least when there is at least one priority one customer is there at least one then the service will be handling only for priority one customer right. So, that is the other possibility is not possible. So, these are the three possibilities. Similarly, when it is in M n right currently the ongoing service is priority one. So, with rate mu one he can move out of the state or either of this priority customers can arrive. So, lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus mu 1 is the rate of uh, you know going out of the state. So, the flow balance would then be equal to lambda plus mu 1 times p m n equal to this right. Similarly, for 0 n. So, here there is 0 priority 1 customer. So, currently ongoing service is for customer 2 or priority 2 right how this 0 1 could have reached there was 1 n and from there with rate mu 1 you would have reached 0 1 or 0 n minus 1 with rate lambda 2 you could have reached 0 n or 0 n plus 1 and with rate mu 2 the service completion happens for priority 2 customer and then he will reach 0 n. Going out again it is the same thing any of arrival or service completion of the ongoing service when m 0 which means there is no priority 2 customers in the system. How, how this could have happened? With rate arrival of uh, lambda 1 one more customer would have come or with the service of the priority 1 customer he would have reached m 0. Going out any of these arrivals or service completion of the priority 1 customer mu 1. So, you get this and the boundary state gone. So, you have this pretty much uh, this uh, system of equations balance equations we set to 4 set of equations set means here we mean this is only one but this is really sets now again like the non preemptive case here also you can define the two dimensional uh, what you have generating functions okay you can define you can simplify and finally you can get the moments of the number of units in the system similar way one can proceed and this gives us suppose if I pick the number here L which is the number in the system this for priority 1 this will be rho 1 by 1 minus rho 1 and for priority 2 it is this expression. Now, how we are obtaining expression you have to do this to obtain expression 
but what this tells is look at the expressions for L1 isn't it look like uh, what you would see in a typical mm1 q and if you look at with preemption that priority 1 customer will behave as if it is a mm1 q for him and whenever the system is free he is free to serve the lower priority customer thus and whenever the system is busy right he has to serve the priority 1 customer he had busy means here that in, in the mm1 context which we are looking at it okay. So, where this L i is the average number of class i customers and class 1 customers are not at all affected by the you know presence of class 2 customers. This is true with preemptive case, but whereas in uh, non preemptive case the class 1 customer would also be affected by the presence of class 2 customer. Whereas, in a preemptive priority queue the class 1 customer or the higher priority customer is not affected by the presence of lower priority customers right. So, this is basically always uh, they are effectively for class 1 customers it is effectively like their mm1 queue. So, you have a simple mm1 queue now you are putting it you know one more class of customers whenever this server is free like you know you decide to serve for the someone else stream that could be of lower priority. Now, whenever your customer comes you will stop him in between and then you start doing this that is the model that you can think of in this particular situations right. So, this is the preemptive again you see that you know more than two again things become complex, but again you know one can get in some sense the expected value measures uh, in a reasonable analysis uh, level ok. So, this is all about uh, priority queuing systems that uh, you know of course, you know this can be studied in a general framework, but we have studied in the Markovian framework. So, that you know you know more about the how a general Markovian systems can be handled in that scene. So, this is that is what we have done. So, we have kind of mentioned of course, we have not derived all results of course, you have to do uh, some kind of derivations by yourself uh, and can see that you know, this is what one encounters when you have a general Markovian queues. For example, in a priority things become complex that is what you know you, you have to understand right that is it. So, this is all about uh, this priority queuing systems that we are going to see in this course as of now ok. Thank you bye.